Channel! Yaddle Channel. <laughs> A Star Wars podcast from across the galaxy, from the very frightening system of New Jersey. It's Yaddle Channel, a Star Wars podcast rising up the charts. We're all the way up to 14,412th best Star Wars podcast in the solar system. My name is Darth David. I'm the Sith who's going to bring you the energy, the excitement, the electricity, literally. Because I bring it verbally, but then if I don't like what my co-host is saying... I shoot him in the face with force lightning. And that co-host's name, put it together for Jedi Jared! Come on. You gotta do a better dramatic clap than that. No, I'm not doing a dramatic clap. I'm doing an uninspired, unenthused clap. Uh, come See, on. there's a difference. There's, it's just a reluctance of someone who doesn't even want to clap for you. That's me, right? That's called a, 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 an apathetic, I don't give a damn crap, uh, clap. Okay. All right, fine. After what you've put me through. Jedi Jared's been having a couple of good weeks on the microphone because we've placed him right in, in front of it. An inch away from the microphone, and you promised to keep doing that. Yes. No more eye contact with me um, in real life. Eye contact with me through the screen. That, okay. That feels a little weird, but I'll I'll, I'll do my best. Okay. Thank, thanks for turning it up there. Um, at, at the end there. Wait, wait, what are you going to do? You I know? like a nice, powerful ending. Okay. Um, Jared. I mean, that's the ending of the show, <laughs> not not the ending of the introduction. I like a nice, powerful ending to the introduction. Okay. It's a great ending. You know, and now it's like, okay, Yaddle Chattel is off and running. So how are you, Jared? I'm doing well, David. How yeah. are you? Yeah. Very busy week. Very exciting week. Oh, yeah. For the Yaddle Boys. Um, we are what? headed off to uh, New York City. Um, and on, uh, Thursday, uh, this is weird because I guess, yeah, this episode will have dropped by the time we will have gone to New York City. We're going to have a, the, the Yaddle Channel, uh, Yaddle Con. It's the first ever Yaddle Con. And it's, uh, it's a, the very first ever convention and gathering for all, no, I'm just kidding. Can I just say We're I, going to FezCon to uh, honor the it, great. I had a good joke. What? What's your joke? I was going to say I miss Soundboard Yaddle. <laughs> FezCon, we're going to, to honor the great Fez Watley of the Rod and Fez Show, a show which I worked for for a number of years, worked for SiriusXM for about a decade, and it's going to be a lot of fun, um, and you're going to give me a ride to uh, the show, on uh, to uh, FezCon on Thursday? Kid, you're on your own. What? Yeah. After all the things Darth oh. David has done for you. Oh, it's... after all the, this is not, okay. this is the We're third going... show you're involved in. We're going there. I've okay. given you, made you so successful in life. Sam and Dave, Eastside Dave show, and now Yaddle channel. How, how much, how much have I made from all of that? Zero dollars. No, 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 no. In fact, it's cost me money <laughs> to do these things. You know, like shock jock robot. Yeah. The iconic robot yeah, yeah, of your yeah, yeah. show both versions of them yeah my idea but but who bought it i did <laughs> came out of my pocket so i should take one of those with me home so that maybe i can there auction it off which just kidding it's going in my office which, which, one? <laughs> it's, uh, which one do you want i'm going with this one right, you're going with the fake one I, i'll let you keep the real one yeah i get to keep the real shock jack robot but in I'll, your face i will take the first Shocked. No, job. that would this is the first. No, that was this, the replacement. No, no, no. This one got injured and we had you go out and get a new oh, one, I but I was able to tape I it thought, up. I thought I forgot it. No, 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 no. I was able to tape this guy up. He got injured, but then I taped him up because Shock Jock must always live. All right. And then we were gonna do something with that where there was gonna be Shock Jock's brother who was who was um like he was very oh politically correct robot. I don't remember that be, one. Okay, so I was gonna do politically correct robot. Where he was going to obviously be the exact opposite of Shock Jock Robot, get up to the line about with a with a with a you know a, a sketchy joke, 
But then just make it nice and funny about puppies and bubble gum and stuff. You know, that was going to be politically correct robot. We never got to him, though. You, you know what? Um, one of my favorite Because bits. Eric Nagel's fat. What? <laughs> go ahead. Well, you might you might see him tomorrow. Good. <laughs> I can't wait to see him. And I'm going to go, you're still really, really fat and really, really dull. Go well, ahead. Well, I, I was going to say, one of my favorite bits you've ever done is the Donald McDonald bit. Tell me <laughs> how brilliant I am. I don't remember Donald McDonald. <laughs> Donald McDonald was your evil twin. <laughs> I don't remember and, this at all. And you would were like pre-record, like you asking yourself as Donald McDonald, like questions. Where like, where did I even do this? You did this on the East Side Dave show. Oh my lord, crazy! You're gonna have to point that out to me. It was like questions from the audience. Remember that bit? Oh, and you were like that. And now he's like, why do you suck so much? Oh yeah. And you're like, oh, that oh that's good. my evil twin, Donald McDonald. Yeah, Donald McDonald. That was good. <laughs> that was funny. Oh man, I'm gonna bring you did him that, back. You did a couple of. I'm gonna bring him that, back. You did that. A couple I'm a times. genius. I'm a genius. Everyone knows this. You you are everyone. I got some guy saying I'm flying in from Chicago. I'm not just surprised. to meet you. I got someone saying I'm coming in from Toronto just to meet you. It's not making it about me, folks. It's about Mr. Fez Walker. It is. The big cat. It's about Fez. All right? Enough said. But you're not going to give me a ride? No. To this gig? To... No. <laughs> Where I live is right by a train station. We're give taking me... the train in. Can't you swing down to no. the house? No. You're 45 you... minutes each way. Jared. How slow do you drive? It takes me a half an okay. hour to drive to your house. 35 minutes. No, do you? You I must drive like a grandma. No, I do 80 the entire way down the parkway. Yes, I get to your house in 30 minutes from well, mine. You probably do it in 90. I drive quickly. You probably take. You probably do about 90 on up the parkway. Are you taking Route 34 or the parkway? No, I take the parkway to 18. Right. This is way too inside base. Oh, yeah, forget that. Listen. <laughs> So the end of the so by the way, um, I would ask for someone from Yal Chow to give me a ride, but because this episode is debuting uh, t- on Friday the twentieth, Fezcon already ended. So thanks a lot. You're welcome. Hopefully, I'm not stranded somewhere in New York City, beaten up, bloody. Everyone wondering what what's this uh, what what's this downtrodden Sith on the side of the road? He doesn't have any pants on. <laughs> what, what's, what's he all about? And I'm just gonna be sitting there. Jared was supposed to give me a ride home. Jared has told you numerous times Jared! that that's not going to happen. Jared, give me a ride home. You literally could take the same train. Because, it's- baby, baby, after eight Jack and Cokes, this won't even be an impression. This is going to be, you could just film this and put this thing on Snapchat. I, this I, is the way I'm, I'm going to be. Jared, sure can you please give me a that. ride? I'll give you forty dollars. Yeah, no, I've got to have to work tomorrow, the next day. You got to work the next day. Yeah, I took off Friday. Well, that's not surprising. But I mean, why wouldn't you? Because I'm not doing please, that. Please, please, can I'm we get saying. into Star Wars yeah, talk now? Well, okay, fine. Now. Remember, Which, what, you want to your voice on? needs to be enunciated. I am enunciated. Mm, okay. Now I got a little enunciation out of you. What do you want to talk about now first? First and foremost, Mando trailer. Mando season three trailer is out. And I thought, I know it's an audio only show, um, but uh, maybe we should watch. Do you think we should watch it? Now? In comments? Aren't you the one that yelled at me last week about doing that on the phone? I know, but the trailer <laughs> is going to give us stuff to talk about. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Fine. Fine. Um, first of all, takeaways while I try to pull it up. Uh, super stoked uh, to see all of those Mandalorians together. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing, seeing a real live action uh, Mandalore because mm-hmm. uh, we've only seen Mandalore uh, right. from an animated perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, looking forward to kind of seeing them fill in the holes because they kind of say that the Empire destroyed Mandalore, mm-hmm. but they don't go into like real detail about it. Okay. Because I think the way we leave it in um, Rebels is is set uh, uh Sabine no not Sabine what's uh Hera not Hera the um the sister of Sabine uh, oh who cares come on 
No, she's the one who has the dark saber. Sabine gives her the dark saber. Uh, what's her face? Uh, Ro- uh, I don't know. Who doesn't ca- matter? Yeah, it's Katie, no, it doesn't. It's Katie Sackoff's character. Oh, she's, Bo-Katan? Bo-Katan, yeah. That's not Sabine's sister. No, 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 no. It's uh, Satine's sister. Oh, my God. You said Sabine. No, well, Sabine gives her the dark oh, saber. Oh, Jesus Christ. None of it. This is where you bring Yaddle into no, a it's vortex true, though, of nothing. Because how does... How you does, just said Sabine... From 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 Rebel. goddamn rebels. Rebels yes. was Bo-Katan's sister. No, I said Satine. That's why some of these names are too much. Satine, Sabine, come on, man. Satine. Andor, Endor. My brother didn't watch Andor because, because he, he thought it was going to be a show about Ewoks. I'm not even kidding. This guy was born in 1973. He likes Star Wars, but he thought, but he was never an Ewok guy. So he didn't watch Andor because he thought it was legitimately going to be a show about Ewoks because it sounds like Endor. Come on. So, they got to get creative. They can literally make up gobbledygook and rubbish for names. So just come up with something. Not Sabine, Satine, this, that. S- Satine was the empress who had a thing with Obi-Wan. Bo-Katan yes. was her younger sister. Yes. And Sabine is from another clan of Mandalorians. Yes. So... When we last see the Darksaber, Sabine, for the rebel, yes. gives it to Bo-Katan. But we don't know how the Darksaber goes from Bo-Katan to um, Moff Gideon. So we might get that filled in, too. Okay. Do you I see, see, what you're see what I'm saying? Yeah, like, but, but, but because it's whoever— The way you tell stories sometimes sucks. You said the last time we've seen the dark saber. The the person who has the dark saber is, is Mando. Right. You're now, actually yes. confusing me, so that means wow. that other people in Yaddle Chattel are being confused. You gotta set things up in a way that makes sense to humans with brains that aren't Jared's. You see? The way you're talking, it makes perfect sense to Jedi Jared. Yes. To Darth David, I have no idea what you're talking. You just said the last person we've seen with the dark saber. Well, no. Are all these people? All I know is the last person with the dark saber is, is Mando. Okay, so so I don't know what you're talking if about. If we work backwards, right? It goes Mando, Moff Gideon. There's some time. Bo Katan, Sabine. Yes. What did the hell does this have to do with the trailer that I'm trying to watch? Well, no, because we're going to probably get a lot of filling in of how that happened. Can we watch the trailer and then discuss this stuff afterwards? Fine. So I've been trying to do the last six minutes. All right. Whatever. Oh, my God. He he, 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 he rejects me with a ride to New York City. And then he goes on some crazy ass tangent. No one knows what he's talking about. Satine over here, Satine over there, Andor over here, Andor over here, Ewok over there, I walk over there. Everything's the same thing. Can I ask you a question? Who drove you to uh, Roger Waters? Was that you? That was me. Did you Did you go with me? Yeah, I went with you to. Oh, I got you a goddamn two hundred ten dollar Roger Waters ticket. No, I paid for that. Oh, you paid for the ticket. I paid for the ticket. Oh. Wait a second. Are you sure about that? I thought I got them from the rat. Well, I, I, you, then you conned me out of money. <laughs> I don't think you were working at the rat at that time. What year was this? Uh, this is during special delivery. <laughs> well, then so, I was. So you weren't working at the rat. What year? Like 2010? Um, yeah, probably 2010. Yeah, no, or it was like, not. So was I very def- much working at Sirius XM. Definitely paid for um, that ticket. And you gave me a ride. Thank you so much. That was very generous of you. You know what? Four points for you. Give myself 55 points for giving you four points. Because I feel like it's magnanimous of a Sith, which I am. I feel like it's magnanimous of me to give a Jedi any points whatsoever. Especially a maggot like yourself. Darth David giving you points? Jedi Jared points? That's a big deal. Another 55 for me, minus four for you for sitting there. Okay. And you were doing some sort of, you were you were you were mocking me. No, I was thinking uh, the what, Yaddle you, Channel fans watching on YouTube saw him mocking me. No, as I, I was I talking, was he was going the, blah, 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 blah. No, the, I was thinking of the time, like when, what year it was. It was around time. 2010, if it was special delivery. Yes, I think I'm pretty sure that was it. Um, all right. Well, let's watch this trailer, and uh, I'm sure you guys have seen it. Um, so uh, we're gonna watch it. We're gonna see if. Our uh, wonderful producer, uh, Robert, can superimpose this. 
uh, on screen. And if not, then, uh, well, just watch on YouTube on your own. The point of this is that we are going to give some commentary because I got... Our people are scattered. Like I have some things to say. What are we? What are we so we uh, start the trailer off with a bunch of Mandalorians. Different colors, too, by the way. That's Orange. Bo that was Boba Fett, right? That was Mando, I think. No, but was Boba Fett in the one of those shots? I didn't, I didn't notice him. Good call. Uh, Grogu now flying with Mando on his lap. Isn't that nice? Not in the bubble. Mando misses him. You know, it's fun. It's like driving with a little dog. And we get another Salacious Crumb looking character. And some people are thinking that's Salacious Crumb himself. I thought he died. Well, we don't know. We know he was uh, on the sail barge for sure. But he was a weird little space monkey. Those things can, you know, seem like they're, they're, they're flexible. I love that R5, by the way. Getting his uh, time in the sun. R5, the, the uh, astromech droid, who of course uh, blew up a little bit in episode 4, making the way for Luke to get R2-D2. R5 now, joining Mando. Okay. I like that. The guy that Jared loves. The cop. Oh, Mr. The Kim. The X-Wing uh, cop with uh, Mr. Kim. Mr. With, Kim. With the gray goatee is back. Order 66. Mando's jumping from a plane. And that looks like uh, Babu Freak is back. This is the you got some monster chasing Grogu. He hits him out with the force. The guy looks great, by the way. I think the uh, special effects look fantastic on him. No, they do look great. He looked very much flesh and blood to me. Not like a cartoon. So there you go. So, takeaways. First and foremost, I, uh, I told you people this. I swear to God, I told you people this. I called it right here on Yaddle Channel. I called it on Yaddle Channel. Which is, I told you that people were going to get confused. The people who bailed out on Boba Fett were going to say, hey, you know, what the hell? I, Grogu is back with Mando and this and that. And literally on Wednesday... It was trending all over Twitter. There were a lot of people who were saying, wait, what, what, what's going on? They just, just the mere poster of Mando holding Grogu, shooting people. People were like, wait, are, they're back together? I thought Grogu was with Luke Skywalker. A lot of the people who didn't watch Book of Boba Fett literally thought that was the end of Grogu's story arc, that now Mando's, Mando's on to something else. So there, there were a significant amount of people who were confused that Grogu was even here, and they're saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. Some people were pissed at Lucasfilm and Star Wars saying, spoiler alert, you're putting Grogu in the trailer? And they're all, like, freaking out. Like, how could you tell us? And, and then the, the Star Wars people had to be like, no, 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 we, they, they reunited the Book of Boba Fett. And those people are freaking out. Well, I dropped out after episode two. So, my Su question for you is, sucks to be who's, them. who's to blame? And... Does Disney have a problem with this? No. In fact, if... But uh, I told you this was going to happen. I need a water. You just, just... You want me to stretch? Stretch. Please stretch. Okay. Yeah, get it really... Get in there. Uh, Work the back, too. Uh, stretch. Stretch. Work the back. Stretch. Uh, stretch. I'm exhausted. All right. Good stretch. Good stretching. Good stretching. So, is first of all, does, does Disney have a... Issue with this. No, because in fact, they've got everyone's got six weeks to catch up and watch the book of Boba Fett. So if they only if they ducked out of two episodes, they could watch an episode each week and be all caught up by the time Mandalorian uh, sets out. Yeah, OK, OK. But, I mean, but, is, but, but is, doesn't that does that? But it, it seems like it's rubbed some people the wrong way that the, 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 the people very much know what you're talking about. And feel a little con. They feel like, oh, you're making us give Book of Boba Fett views. You're making us now watch this show, giving it clicks, giving it, you know, in radio, it's TSL, time spent listening. I would imagine that these streaming services have something very similar to time spent listening, whether it's TSV, time spent viewing. So these people are saying, now I got to do this with Book of Boba Fett. And I didn't like Boba Fett, the Book of Boba Fett. I mean, if you were paying attention to anything. Is it a PR problem? No, it's not a PR problem at all. And it's probably coming from a lot of the people that are more casual Star Wars fans. Like, say, your your brother, um, who 
did your brother watch the book of Boba Fett? No, I, I didn't talk to him about this. But what I, I'm, I'm saying is I saw this all over Twitter and different social media where there were people complaining about this. Well, let them complain. People are going to complain no matter what. So. so you don't think it's an issue? No, I don't at all. I think Mandalorian. Because even for me, though, like. When I go back and like, like, let's say 10 years from now <clears throat> and there's, you know, and Mando's done and we have a Mandalorian collection, you're going to be without two of the most important episodes I think that in the, that mythology. If they don't make another season of the Book of Boba Fett 2, or if they- No, but just the mere fact that those two episodes aren't even in the Mandalorian catalog now is odd. It it is weird, like thinking about that. But all that was something they should have probably saved for the Mandalorian. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, I mean, it's. Do you th the conspiracy? I've, I've, the conspiracy is man, episode the la final episode of Book of Boba Fett. Yeah. Okay, with yeah. Mando there. Yeah. Was always going to happen. Okay. But they decided. To put the first, basically, they thought Book of Boba Fett was going poorly. It was getting criticized online, as always. And so they dropped the first two episodes of The Mandalorian. And they put him in as the Book of Boba Fett, knowing that The Mandalorian was going to show up for the season finale. So they thought, we'll, 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 we'll just so take a detour into The Mandalorian world. We'll get the fans off of the book of Boba Fett. They're upset about the scooter chase. They're upset about this and that. And Boba Fett's not doing all, all the stuff that I they mean, want him to do. I'm so just give him Mandalorian. I'm, First two episodes. I'm pretty sure that all of this was planned out ahead of time. So you don't think that th there's any truth to they just decided to throw in the first two episodes of The Mandalorian? No, I don't. To, to help the book of Boba Fett. No, I think that they were always going to be tied together. They're, what they're trying to do is create a universe where I all agree. these characters exist at the same time. I agree with that. I mean, if you don't see, you don't watch the book of Boba Fett, you're not going to have the most latest context of Ahsoka when we see that Ahsoka is with Luke and Grogu. That's true too. And the Ahsoka series is coming out after Ma after Mando. You gotta watch 3. the book of Boba Fett, and if you even if you skip the first four episodes, you gotta watch episodes five, six, and seven. You have to. You have to. But this what? is why I keep saying to Star Wars fans: Don't tell me you're a Star Wars fan and you drop out of a six or seven episode season and you drop out after episode two. Stop it. You don't have that, you, your attention span, and honestly, your negativity is that strong, your attention span is that poor, and your negativity is that strong, that if you don't like something that quickly, it, it's got to be so instantaneously gratifying for people. We live in a society these days where just people need everything right now. You it's, can't set up a story. You can't build a universe. It's not even that, but you know, Gosh. it's very rare that a pilot episode is perfect. Like I can count on one hand how many pilot episodes of television I've seen that I thought were like perfect. I thought television. the first two episodes of Boba Fett were just fine. I thought it was fine I, too. I, no issue. Did not understand people's freaking out. I literally heard people uh, say, uh, "Oh no, this is the this is what they said after Obi Wan Kenobi because the same people dropped out after two episodes of Obi Wan Kenobi. So this is the new thing: watch two episodes and drop out. First of all, don't do that with a Star Wars show. Well, no, what there's six episodes. You really can't watch them all. They're wa Give they're, me a break. Well, they're watching. No one's as busy as they say they are. This is my biggest complaint on the planet. No one's got nothing to do with you. Okay. Okay." Although you are guilty of it like everyone else. Okay. But everyone's guilty of this. I don't have an infant. It's fine. Everyone is guilty. Everyone is guilty of this. Everyone makes themselves out to be the busiest person on the planet. I don't have the time. Shut up. You've got the time. Uh, I, I'm busy. I'm busy. Shut up. Everyone pretends like they work for the Pentagon or the CIA or something. Stop it. Everyone's got 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Everyone does. You were scrolling on your phone, or you were playing Xbox or PlayStation, or you were watching your stupid uh, Real Housewives show, or whatever the hell you were doing. 
But everyone always says, oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I got busy, I'm so I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. Shut up! I got like nine radio shows. This guy's got an infant. I got two kids. By the way, brother, yeah. teenagers, a lot harder than a little stupid baby. Well, I had them both as babies. When they were both babies, I could feed them and then put them away. <laughs> no, 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 no. You got no idea what you're talking about. Teenagers versus a baby? Yeah, I'll be in your shoes any goddamn day of the week, bub. Any day of the week. And my kids, I got twice the amount. Yeah, teenagers. Combined with an FM radio show teenagers and three highly to... successful podcasts. Teenagers and yet I don't never, want to be ever, around parents. ever, ever say to someone I'm too busy. Teenagers don't want to be around parents. What are you talking about? Yeah. My children love me. Yeah, I know that. Right? Agreed? I Thank you, Sith Stanley. Thank you, Sith Stanley. I was looking for him. What? Sith Stanley. Hold on. I'm here for a second. It's Jared, stretch for a second. Put this. Ugh, God. Ugh. Okay, hold it up. Ooh, come that was a good here. one. I hope you guys heard come that crap. Because I really come, enjoyed Come over that. here. Come over but, here. But, uh. Get it on the camera. Oh, look. There's Sith Stanley. Now, you agree? What were we even talking about? What does he agree with? Oh, well, he... he do like their dad. No, 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 I'm not saying they don't... I, I'm not saying they don't... The light, they just don't want to be with them. Do you want to... Do you enjoy my company, Stanley? Yes. Sith Stanley? Well, I know that. You guys are best friends. <laughs> he enjoys my company. Sith Stanley enjoys my company. So, in other words... Speak for yourself. Just because your child is going to inevitably despise you That's never doesn't happen. mean my kids hate me. And don't ever say that. You just said my children don't want to be around me. Well. Didn't he say that, Sith Stanley? He did. Now, do you want to be around me? Yeah. In your face. Now, get lost. Get lost. Get out of here, Sir Stanley! Stanley, I'm gonna say give it a few years, bud. You're still very young. You're uh, 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 13, so you're about a, a t t about to enter teenage years. He is a teenager now. That's what 13 is. Yeah, wait till he's 16. Give me a break. It's not gonna happen. Okay, okay. Um... So that's the thing with Book of Boba Fett. I think, or, or at least one of the things... With the Mandalorian, is that they are going to have to? I mean, seriously, they're going to have to tell. They're going to do a recap and go previously, and they'll include scenes from the Book of Boba Fett. I mean, it, I view it at least as an incentive that if you tapped out after the first two episodes of the Book of Boba Fett, give it another shot. No, oh, man. I mean, and, and there's what, a part of me that actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I am happy that these little stupid weasels who proclaim to be Star Wars fans and all they do is complain and they bail out. I'm actually, now that we're talking about it out loud and this is definitely the Sith in me, screw them. Yeah. I'm happy that they're all miserable and saying this kind of, oh, what happened? What happened? What happened? No, you lost out. That's why I said... Don't bail out after two episodes, I, nitwit. I'm pretty sure it was discussed. Like, even Filoni was basically saying that the Book of Boba Fett is Mando season 2.5. I told you that they should. I swear to God, the more I talk, the more I realize that maybe Disney should actually hire me. I never thought that that was the case. But just, they make so many mistakes that I could easily help them. Number one, I told them what they should do. Forget about the Book of Boba Fett as a title. Nice and simple. Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. It, right in the title, you would have known what you were getting. To the point where even Boba Fett's name is first. First four episodes are going to be Boba. Mando's name is second. The last three episodes are Mando. Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. It's the same thing that freaking Marvel does. Captain America and the Winter Soldier. Guess what the movie's about? Captain America and the Winter Soldier. It's easy branding. And Marvel has had a little bit of success, have they not? Yeah. I so know. maybe Star Wars can learn from that. Don't get all cute with the book of Boba Fett. Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. That would have been perfect. I suggest they just simply go back and rename it. Honestly. Well, they're not. That's not. You know, that's not going to happen. Why not? It's not a movie. 
Well, because they, it doesn't matter. Just, just go back and rename it Boba Fett and the Mandalorian, or call it the Book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. Well, because there's, all, we do there's that? all of this merchandise that already exists. So call it the Book of Boba Fett and the Mandalorian. Okay. I, I guess what they what they could. Jeez. I, I, hmm. I mean, they could eventually go back and do what they did with the original trilogy. Like they weren't they originally wasn't called like a New Hope. It was just Star Wars, and then they added, you know, A New Hope. I know. That is boom! And you're arguing about me? No, well, what I'm saying is, I don't think... They change the titles! No, 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 thank you! But they change a, titles a, in Star Wars all the time! Let's a, do this! It's, a, it's more of a subtitle. Like, it's Star Wars, Episode 4, Here's why, Hope. here's why. I don't think the book of Boba Fett's coming back. I don't. So, in other That's words... unfortunate. I agree. I love the show. I love seeing a Sarlacc pit again. I love seeing the Rancor monster. I love seeing huts. I there love was seeing so much Robert that Rodriguez I enjoyed. In Star Wars. It was like anyone who loves Return of the Jedi. It was like a Return of the Jedi greatest hits. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was fun. I told you. I thought it was a Saturday morning cartoon come to real life. It's, it was just supposed to be a fun thrill ride. And, and for it, me, it worked in that capacity. It had Cad Bane. It had Cad Bane. It had a lot of great stuff going for it. It had the Power Rangers in Star Wars. Listen, I love the show. The Scooter Gang <laughs> stunk. That was the one. But see, the Scooter but Gang. Lo- didn't, but the Scooter Gang didn't kill the show. No. People made him out like you know they were the most important thing. They had like probably twelve minutes of total screen time. We, I, we, we relax with the Scooter I Gang. I was already. just like, oh, they're, it's the Power Rangers, right? Yeah, I mean, it, was, it was stupid. Stupid. It was fun. So why? If they were the spies, they were Boba's spies, right? They yeah. were his secret surveillance team. So they dressed in neon colors and rode neon colored scooters. You see how stupid that was? If they're a, a goddamn spies, they should all have been wearing tans, wearing, wearing Tatooine. It's Sandy, for crying out loud. Or wear masks or something like something. that. Yeah. Anyway, um, I don't think Book of Boba Fett's coming back. If it doesn't change the name, could we, could could you accept that? If it does not come back for season two, could you accept simply going forward? We change the name to because on a historic and like a like a historic level, this is a little screwy. Plus, like you're gonna have generations from the future want to go back and discover Mandalorian. We're all assuming everyone's like the same age. You're gonna have some kid who's maybe four years old right now who's a Star Wars fan. Ten years from now, they 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 want to check out the Mandalorian, and they're not going to know to watch the Book of Boba Fett. They're I, not going to know that. I mean, there is this thing called the internet. They could look that up. You're not seeing my point. If oh, you don't know what you don't know, you're not going to know to look it up on the internet. You understand? They don't know what they're missing, so they're going to go into the Mandalorian. And binge watch it, and then all of a sudden, what the hell? Why is how's Grogu back here? I'm talking about people from the future. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, Disney, listen to me from time to time. Again, I know what I'm talking about when it comes to branding. Again, the, jeez. I understand what they're trying to do by create a universe, and the Mandalorian is kind of the center of that universe. So don't be surprised if you see Mando in the Ahsoka series. Because, like I said, they're trying to build I understand. this this universe post Return of the Jedi. I think we're all uh, going for uh, going towards a Mando movie. Uh, I, I, I think before Ray or Finn or anyone gets a movie, I think you'll get a Mando movie. I think the first movie you may get is a Mando movie. I, I mean, where know. what's the scuttlebutt on the on the movies? They don't. That, they don't know. That's why Iger's well, back, right? They, no, I just think that. They just aren't gonna make them right now because in the no mo- no 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 that's what they thought that's what they they wanted to do. Bob Iger came back because he thought that plan was absolutely stupid, a dumb dumb plan. So they're gonna have to give it more time. Yeah, but Iger is not back because Disney's going well. Disney's going poorly. But and, they, but and, that's, and it's Star not just Wars, it's not just Star Wars. No no no, it's not. It's not. It's off the rails. The, that guy, the uh, the former guy, Chappick or whatever, I've seen him talk. He's on the um, Imagineering documentary. Um, 
Oh no, he was the guy before Iger. I don't know. No, the, no, because I, I uh, you're, are you thinking of? Isn't I, I it was an I not Eisner? Michael Eisner was, was there was there was a guy between. between? Yes, there was really? a guy between Eisner and and Iger. I thought that Iger was his pre, uh, his like the guy who came after him, like directly after him. No, there was like, a guy after there. There was a guy after that guy. Well, that, that I guess no one really cares about that guy because you know everyone knows Eisner and Iger. Well, it, there are different Disney CEOs, and the ones that make the mistakes all the time are they worry about money and they say stupid things like "We're here to make money. We want to make money." Well, and I mean, while, they, they are. While Bob Iger wants to make money, he is intelligent and realizes the best way to make the most money is to come out come out with really cool stories. Don't just make money because you're Disney. Make money because you're going to blow people's minds away with awesome movies and TV. And so he's he is about content. He's about, hey, let's get out there, make movies, but make them awesome. Let's go. So I, I, I like that. I'm just saying. I bet you The Mandalorian will be your first Star Wars movie going forward. That's going to be a Davey Mac and a Darth David prediction. Give myself five points for being right. Because I can see the future, as you uh, say. I just, uh, that worries me so much because uh, the last time one of my favorite television shows put out a movie, it w- wasn't that great. What? Oh, the Sopranos. That's That was a terrible movie, but let's keep in mind, that was not a Sopranos movie. I that mean, was not a Sopranos movie. A Sopranos movie would have had James Gandolfini and Stephen Van Sant and the OGs in about 2010. That movie came out 10 years late with no one we liked. And quite frankly, David Chase lost it. That movie oh, was yeah. one of the worst films I ever saw. And I'll he tell did, you he, what, Star Wars fans, you thought episode eight was uh, that was that was beautiful. That that would have been a unifying picture compared to what the Sopranos movie did to the Sopranos universe. Oh, he could. That like, was a disgrace. If you want to talk, like, disgrace. I, it, this ain't Sopranos. Channel. I know, I know, but I just want to say, if you want to talk about retconning an entire series, but for a for, in the worst way possible. Oh, a- absolutely. Like they made Tony so, in, in the the show is supposed to take place the first episode in nineteen ninety eight. It's not right? Sopranos Channel. No, but I just want to put a point. I know, but you got to put it out quicker. Once you start asking well, me be, questions, it's not quick. All right. Well, fine. The point I'm trying to make is Tony's supposed to be like 40 in 1998. And like they completely made him like a teenager in the 70s when yeah. he should have been like it's like in, in the early 70s when he should have been even, like. A, even it was like 1970. Like he's a, 69. Like Tony comes of age in the 80s. Like that heist takes yeah, place know. in the 80s. I know. It, 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 was, it was awful. But is that? But that that that's what scares me because The Sopranos is is one of my favorite television shows, and that movie was awful. It was awful, and that's what. Scares but that me wasn't. About, but that again wasn't a real Sopranos movie. That was that that was just a mistake. But that was the original creator writing and directing and promising like that the that old feeling, and what concerns me is maybe ten years down the line. I just don't see them putting out a Mandalorian movie no, 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 now no, 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 no. because I, the I, long form, the long format storytelling is working right now. Well, I'm not going to, first of all, we're not putting the Mandalorian out 10 years from now, but why would there, why would they make a movie? Like it's the whole, don't fix something that's not broken. The long format storytelling is working for the Mandalorian. Why make a movie? Because we, as Star Wars fans, Fell in love with this franchise in the movie theater. Arguably, sure, this is the single greatest cinematic franchise ever. It was born to have people go to the theater, get their candy, their popcorn, their soda, have a communal experience with other moviegoers, have a great time. And then leave the theater in a buzz. Everyone talking about, well, how about that part? And how about that part? It's a communal experience. I totally understand and that. And that is something that has been forgotten. you got to get that buzz of the Star Wars fans having that Star Wars communal 
experience. I, I think... Okay, not everyone is a loner, some sort of, you know, like John Malkovich in the line of fire like Jedi Jared Fishman. Not everyone's a psychopath unibomber <laughs> like you who wants to sit in a cabin by himself talking to himself, you know, putting bombs in, in cardboard boxes. I don't think Uncle Ted talked to himself. I mean, some of us like to go out, mingle with the people. You know, I'm a Sith. I hate you, but I love people. Sis love to party, baby. We love to party. We love the funky. Okay. So uh, I'm saying this would help out with that process. Because I don't think that any of the movie ideas that we've heard are getting off the ground. The guy who did, you know, the Thors, that's not happening. No. I don't, I, I, don't, I think they'll... The guys who did Game of Thrones, that's not happening. Honestly, I think what well, Ryan they, Johnson's trilogy that ain't happening. Th- I think what they may do is approach Filoni and Favreau about doing oh, a movie. Go ahead, you got to stretch for a second. But I don't think that it'll have anything to do necessarily with Mandalorian. Um, I think they'll probably put a lot of parameters on. Um, what you, they would be able, I think they'd be putting a lot of parameters on where they can operate because they don't want to screw up any of the timeline that currently exists. And the television shows are existing uh, between the movies, if you will. So we don't know what we're going to see. And now we're getting, with the Acolyte, we're getting even further back. Yes. So I don't know what. Oh, go ahead. Cre- no, no, no. What what Kathleen Kennedy and what Bob Iger are going to put on them to say, hey, we want a movie, but you can't do X, Y, and Z. Like, it can't take place during the any of the trilogy series. They might say that. They might say, but it also can't take place. I don't think that's what he's saying at all. Bob Iger has told people what he said, which is unlock that imagination Send your scripts. We're taking everything. We're not saying yes to everything. We are taking everything. To me, that implies that it doesn't matter what they're uh, they're going to do. Um, or it doesn't matter what the story is. If it's good, they'll do it. Now, you know, I, I keep think, telling I th- them. I think it also has to make sense. Like it's got to fit. Because they're they've built this entire you know this is a a, a universe now fit that what fit into the Star Wars overall universe like they can't just say oh we're gonna do this kind of thing but it doesn't work in the sense that it doesn't fit in. What are you talking? You mean they they can't make a shitty movie? I mean no, they can't make a shitty movie. No, they but made I mean of movies. course they're gonna fit. What are you? What what? They're, they're they're gonna make give Luke Skywalker purple hair? Like what are you talking about? It's gotta fit. Of course it's gotta fit. Did Rogue One fit? Yeah. Well, that's what they would do. Uh, they're would, not gonna make like some movie where the the stormtroopers are are wearing, you know, green and yellow polka dots. I, I'm not saying that. I'm I'm saying uh, your 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 point is confusing. Is it? I'm saying it's got to make sense. If- of course they're going to make a Star Wars movie that's going to fit. They're not going to all of a sudden just be like, his name is Fred Vader. <laughs> or I, they're, I, they're, they're not going to, you know, like, of course. Did it of make course. sense to bring back the Emperor? Yes. Uh, because Snoke, didn't, I, I think Snoke that, didn't make sense. I think Snoke did make sense at first. And I think that, I hate to go back to episode eight again. Kind of shit the bed with what they what potential they had with Snoke. Forget about it. We did it last week. We're not I talking know. about Snoke but again. But what I'm saying is that certain things just don't make – that that y- there are certain things that don't will not make sense because someone's – they don't have some like autistic nerd. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean like someone who knows <laughs> – It sounds bad. No, but someone that's going to be like, well, actually this is what happened in this movie or this television show and that's why it doesn't work. They can't worry about those they, they people. They have to. No, they don't. Because those are the people no, that are going to show up. No, no, no. God, you're wrong. You're the one that's going to be, you are going to be that guy who's going to go see it opening night. 
Now there's going to be someone who's the who Yes, but I'm not some 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 asshole who quibbles about stupid shit when there's a better overarching story involved. Listen, at the end of the day, it's about the story, getting people involved, emotionally connecting with the audience. It's a very difficult balance that obviously George Lucas proved is far more difficult to accomplish than people realize. Because Star Wars is the ultimate mashup. Of course it's science fiction and fantasy. There's also parts western, parts romance, parts action adventure, parts comedy, parts samurai movie, parts monster movie. There's so many different parts. There's so many different genres. And George Lucas was able to take all of those genres, put them in a pot, stir them together, and pour out something beautiful. And I think a lot of these directors fail to recognize that. And even Kathleen Kennedy and some of the folks at Lucasfilm fail to recognize that Star Wars is layered. Star Wars is not one thing. You can't approach Star Wars with any single way. That's why I say Disney Plus has been successful. Because I like the contrast of the different shows. I like how Mando has its own vibe. Obi-Wan had its own vibe. Andor has its own vibe. I enjoy that. I'm not one of these asshole critics who as soon as they like something, they say, now everything has to be just like this. The critics who liked Andor. And now they, they're shitting on Mando. Fuck you. Why are they shitting? When did that happen? Why did they shit on Mando? Mando's oh, that's Mando. happening as we speak. Why are they shitting on Mando? Andor is the only way to make Star Wars shows going forward. That's it. That's just clickbait. <laughs> so much it's of this not, shit. Is, it's it, the it's, way it's, critics feel. It's not clickbait. Look, I, I, look, look. What's it? I'll click on it and I read the article and they're still saying that shit. Oh, let them say it. No, I don't like they're just saying it to be contrarian and say they're 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 just pivoting because it's because Andor is the last po popular thing. But if everyone forgets Disney Plus launched with The Mandalorian and it's probably their biggest property to date. Like are you telling me that any kind of Mandalor or uh, Andor anything from Andor that they sell is outselling fucking no. Grogu? No, of course not. In fact, Andor had I believe the lowest ratings of any of the Star Wars series. It was it was enough. critically a cl very much clear. Oh my god! I mean, it's been nominated for Golden Globes and and, and stuff, and, and you know, it's going to get Emmys and stuff. It's it's, it's a very acclaimed show, critically and, acclaimed show, and, and people f and I love it. But I love Andor. I just want Andor to keep making Andor seasons. Mando to keep making Mando seasons. Obi Wan or or you and McGregor and Hayden Christensen to keep doing their thing. And Boba Fett keep doing his thing, introduce some new like I'm for people doing their thing. Can I ask you? This isn't the nineties anymore. Like, let me ask you a question. Has there been a television show that you got into after it was even on the air? That there was a show that you started like either streaming or watching on demand that it had been years before uh or years since the show left the air. Oh, man. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. Well, actually, The Clone Wars was somewhat of an example of that. Because, uh, believe it or not, I didn't think I... I didn't think I liked The Clone Wars animation because I was one of the first... <laughs> like this, huh, baby? I was one of the first HD television buyers in America! Yeah, it's true. I had one of the first HD TVs ever. And the problem was, was when big. you had, no, <laughs> when you had the, the HD before, all of the channels were converted to HD. So when you watched standard definition channels on an HD TV, it looked like 50 times shittier than it would if you were just watching standard definition on a standard definition TV. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Kind of. In other because words, I. I the, the old school HD TVs would have like HBO in HD, and that was awesome. But Cartoon Network Didn't was not in HD. HD. Well, that's the only TV I had. So in other words, then I have to watch Cartoon Network on standard definition, right? When I turned on Clone Wars, honestly, in season one, it's I thought this looks like shit. 
I can't watch. Now, I say that 100% admittedly incorrect because it was all the fucking definition. It was literally the, the, the HD SD thing that was going on. Years later, when I went to Netflix, because they had the Clone Wars on HD, that's how I watched it, and I fucking loved it. And I love the animation. I thought, oh my god, the animation is gorgeous. That That's kind of how I felt with, like, Mad Men. I didn't get into Mad Men until, like, they were put, they had released, the, like, the first four seasons on Netflix, and I binged the whole series. I'm like, this is one of the best television shows ever. And I didn't like, and even then I would sure. wait, I'd wait till the seasons dropped on, on Netflix. The Wire was one oh, that I Wire did not too. watch live. Where were you going with this? I forget. I, I'm just saying that like these critics keep talking about these shows as if like the season will air and that's it. We don't live in that paradigm anymore. Like you can go back and watch all of this content. Right. Okay. But the, how does this pertain to Mando. Well, I'm just saying that, like, people are saying, well, they're, they're, they're crapping on it because it was the last thing, right? Yes. So if you like if you like the Mandalorian, watch the fucking Mandalorian and you don't watch Andor. It, 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 it doesn't really, like, it doesn't fucking make sense, like, in the sense, the two stories don't conflict. Okay. But, you know, if you want to see some great scenes that have to do with the Mandalorian, watch the Book of Boba Fett. You have to what? Listen, if you, you have to watch. You it. have to watch Book of Boba Fett. Seriously, well, I and, mean, and if you episodes have to, five, six, and seven, if you're a Mando fan, you obviously have to watch it now. I thought whether you want to or not. And I'll 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 say this, but they're great episodes, by the way. You should watch them. Wh- while, Interestingly enough, I watched episode five last night. That's just the, last that, night. That's the Jedi episode, right? No, that's that's when Mando. Um, season two, uh, I mean, I mean, this is Book of Boba Fett, by the way, episode five. Let me be specific. That's when he, you know, he's at, he's with those dogs at the beginning of the butcher shop. Oh yeah. And then and uh, he beats him. them up and then he gets the dark saber or, and then he goes to the thing and then he goes uh, to the hey, late fu- Tatooine, hey. gets the Starfighter. I love that episode. That's one of my favorite episodes of TV, period. I just love the vibe. This is why I keep saying that Bryce Dallas Howard should be a, one of the first, like one of the biggest considerations for a, a movie, movie director. Because I find her Mando and Boba Fett episodes to be the best. Not in terms of they have the best content. She is the best at making it Star Wars. She gets the big action looking incredible. Eye-popping, mind-blowing action. Just good old-fashioned, this is awesome. But... She gets the small moments, the sensitive moments, the storyline moments. She gets all the other moments perfectly as well. She tells all of the Star Wars stories very rich. As opposed to just either relying on special effects or just trying to do a story where where there's twists and turns. She just has a perfect grasp of Star Wars. I feel like her her episodes are the most Star Wars-y. Of anything is she did is that episode five the same episode no of so, book of Boba so Fett. I'm thinking I must be thinking of episode six head head sorry I'm thinking of episode six of the book of Boba Fett where he goes to that planet where Luke's training Grogu that's episode six so and then episode seven I is thought I the last I honestly Phoba. I thought that episode six was up until that point the most Star Warsiest thing oh I, I love seen. episode six like it it, it had everything like, I love it. It, Don't get me wrong. It had all the great themes of Star Wars because now we're seeing like Luke as the master. And I'm sorry, I'm spoiling it for you, but no, it's still. I mean, it's not our fault. I, I know it's, it's something that you should have known like, if you didn't watch. I mean, Book of Boba. I'm sure everyone is watching. It Galaxy had it. me feeling like a child again watching. It's great watching it on Channel 11 or HBO. Oh, oh my God, it was great. It was heartbreaking, but it was so like oh, nostalgic. God. I forgot about the the end. It's just such a. It was the most Star Warsiest thing I'd ever seen. Can I be honest? I, I, are you Are you gonna say that Episode Six now is the best one? No, I'm you're not. Still, you're still sticking with Episode Five. Yes. Okay. A Jedi never changes a Sith's mind. You fucking nerd. 
Are you sure about that? Yes. You want to bet? You want to make money on that? Maybe. How much money you want to bet? Have you ever seen a movie called Return of the Jedi? Yes. Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure uh, Darth Vader was pretty much set as being a Sith, and um, Luke changed his mind. Oh. It was Luke, was it? Yeah, it was a Jedi changing a Sith mind. Mm-hmm. Now it might We're be. We're gonna debatable. move on. It might be because I have no no retorts. For it, this it, it also might be debatable. Plus five for me for keeping the show running. It also, Minus four for you. Well, I, I have no retort to this, so well, I just gotta keep the show moving. What's Joe? You said Joe Dallas gave us yeah, an email. Yeah, De- Well, I mean, points are gonna change obviously from this episode, but Joe Dallas uh, sent us. Well, I mean, that's a blunt way to wrap wrap up the conversation. Let me just say, um, so. I'm looking very much forward to Mando season three. I do think it looks great. Um, it already looks a little bit more cin- cinematic, and um, Carl Weathers is uh, back it, too. Yeah, and I wonder I like if a lot. there could be some good influence from Andor, which is hey, Mando should just be Mando. In other words. John Favreau, Dave Filoni, you guys are knocking it out of the ballpark. I've legitimately loved every single Mandalorian episode ever. That's the, that's the truth. And so they're killing it. But maybe Andor's inspiring people to be a little more cinematic. Be a little bigger. You know, not just rely on volume, but let's really try and make this cinematic because Andor looked like a movie. Yeah, it did. And if you go back and look at, again... Love it so much. Just a couple of little things here and there from Mandalorian Season 1. There's a major difference in Mandalorian Season 1 aesthetically and then what they did with Andor. Andor kind of blows it away aesthetically. Doesn't mean I don't love Mando Season 1. I do. I'm just saying. Be honest. Well, they weren't... Sh- the, most of the Mandalorian and the Book of Boba Fett stuff was filmed with... In the that, volume. In that volume thing. Yeah. I know. I, that's why I said the volume. What did Joe Dallas say? All right. So, uh, Joe Dallas went through all the recent points for the Ruby episode. He says, uh, shout out from the Florida Keys. It's time for the 40th show Ruby anniversary episode point breakdown. Weatherman Palpatine Roker should be a regular, and I agree with Dave. I don't want to read Star Wars either, Daddy. <laughs> Put it on the screen. Thank you, Jared, for allowing me to uh, make sour cream a healthy, new, steady Yeah, I know. That was diet, surprising. Dietary part of my Time out. diet. Last week on Yaddle Channel, you said that sour cream is good for you. Yeah. Is that really true? Fat is not bad for you. Sugar is. Because I just find I, it I, hard I, to believe just, because sour cream... Uh, like I always thought sour cream was bad for you, so I also so, so okay. like I would so, be eating sour cream literally out of the jug with a spoon. I love it that much. Fifty years ago, the scientists that were paid by the sugar industry came out with fake reports. This is all true, uh, saying that fat is bad for you and sugar is good. So everyone put sugar in every like they replaced fat with sugar, and then magically the entire country became obese. And started having heart problems and diabetes. So, so sugar is bad for like but sour cream. You can just go to town on it. Yeah, I can put it on everything. I just I, don't I have a on, lot of carbs. I, I can put it on an apple. I, w- I mean, if you like it, I, I can put it on a banana. Why would, why would you I can put it on my my cornflakes in the morning? I will do these things. I you don't understand. I love sour cream is is maybe have you at tried this point con- in time? At this point, I'm. Darth David's hot takes starts right now. At this point in time, sour cream is my number one condiment. Fuck you, ketchup. Whoa. Fuck you, salsa. Big mood. Fuck you, mustard. I know. Big mood. Okay. Um, because I could put sour cream on a burger if I wanted to. Yeah, you could. I fucking hey, I, I I'm going to. Have you I just a- made burgers. You want one? Have you ever tried cottage cheese? You might like cottage cheese. Ew! Cottage cheese I call lumpy, tasteless, shitty sour cream. That's what I call cottage cheese. Because okay. one time, one time, I bought sour a, a cottage cheese at ShopRite because I thought it, it was, like sour, it was cream. sour cream. The <laughs> container looked exactly the same. So then at 2 o'clock in the morning, after 9 IPAs, I go to make myself a fucking uh, hot dog. And you put and cottage, I put, yeah, yeah. put cottage cheese all over it. Barf city, people. Barf city. Cottage cheese, 
Don't if you ever because you don't put see it with me fucking food. Guys, cheese. If you ever see me on the same goddamn sidewalk, you better cross the street, motherfucker. All right, can we get the points, please? Because we still have to get to wait, bed. Wait, is that all Joe Dallas said? Oh yeah, yeah, that was more or less it. And yeah. then he goes to the point break. And he likes the Emperor, uh, the Palpatine oh, weather yeah. report. And then he goes. He basically breaks down uh, the points. So let's get to the meat of it. Let's uh, get to the meat of the boom. But first, but first, Jared. Today, high of 39 degrees. It says 48 right now. Oh, high of 54 degrees and low of 39. What's the precipitation, Jim? Would the bit killer like to shut his mouth while Palpatine Roka gives the weather? Okay, I'm going to check my On Thursday in New Jersey, Joe Dallas, lows of 36 Highs of 48 and a 90% chance of precipitation. That means rain. The kind of galactic rain that will bring down authority onto your heads. Okay. Umbrellas will not work. Saturday looks nice. Highs of 52, lows of 38, sunny skies. I'm Palpatine Roker. Fuck you, America. Okay. I don't know how he's going to get, you know, over on the Today Show if his tagline is fuck you, America. I think that's the only thing that he needs to change with his weather report. Palpatine, that is. He needs a new catchphrase. Can't say fuck you, America. That's not what you do on the Today Show. You know, if he's going to power himself after Al Roker, you got to do something smiley or maybe a, a Willard Scott. You got to thank uh, old, uh, you know, say hi to old people. Maybe maybe he's more like a, a Matt Lauer and he's got like no, a no, lock no. on his door and a trap door. No, Matt Lauer's <laughs> more like Palpatine. Matt Lauer's a sick freak. By the way, real quick, I just, uh, on Sunday, highs of 48, lows of 33. And I do need to give a shout out to Yaddle. It's her 116th birthday today. Yaddle enjoys knitting, fighting Count Dooku, having orange hair, and abandoning her child, Grogu. Anyway, happy 116th birthday, Yaddle. Fuck you, America. I'm Palpatine Roka. Eat my ass. I, 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 I guess, guess eat I, my yeah, ass yeah, is his yeah. new tagline. I guess that works. I mean, it's not cursing. I guess you could get away with it on the Today Show, but is that the vibe that Savannah Guthrie and those folks are going for? I don't know. Isn't Bush daughter uh, host now? I don't know. That's I, I do a hit morning radio show at the exact same time. Gotcha. WRAT 95.9 FM. We got our, our book. Guess who's number one at the shore? We just got it last Tuesday. Q4? Guess who's number one at the shore? Uh, Carl and Dave. Morning rat race. Carl and Dave. 95.9. The rat. Number one. Again! It's great being this dominant. Okay. So Joe Dallas. you. You know what? By the way, give Joe Dallas 12 points. Okay. This was a very informative email on Joe Dallas's part. Give yourself minus 12. Because I didn't feel like you brought the thunder how Joe Dallas did. Well, before this episode, uh, you had uh, 532,316 points. Yes. And I had minus 152,171. Good. And Joe Dallas is up uh, 12,654 points. Uh, let's get Joe Dallas 12 more points I, I, for all of these uh, calculations. You know, I think you do a bit better than that for Joe. You know what? Like 1,200. Minus 1,200 for you, Fruitcake, for making me feel bad. A Sith giving anyone points is a big deal. I mean, you always give points even before you became a Sith. So. No, 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 no. I've always been a Sith. Even before I gave points. <laughs> All right. Okay. Shit, we're running out of time. I know. Let's uh, let's do a quick bit, bad right. batch recap. Bad batch. Takeaways. Um, 
All right, look. This is not going to be me bashing the Bad Batch each and every week. It's not. Um, but, folks, my biggest complaint is that each and every week, Omega goes into business for herself. The fucking Bad Batch, these guys were, you know, ruthless mercenaries. Now their whole lives are changed. Their brothers, half of them want to kill them. The other half are all fucked in the head. The, the, these guys have experienced significant PTSD. For real. They have experienced trauma. And yet, every fucking week, <laughs> Isn't it the girl has to say, wait a second, you, you go, I should... So this week it was, the gangster wanted to have a race, or this or that, and she goes, well, it's going to be double or nothing. And, 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 I knew that and, was coming too. I was like, oh, they're... And when that, she uh, had to device. fucking tell the two guys, Wrecker and Echo... Oh, no, it's Wrecker and Tech. Uh, tech. This, that's the other problem. Echo and Tech, don't know. Wrecker, Zeb, same person. Anyway, when she went to them and said, uh, like, they're like, well, we don't like this plan. This is a gangster. And she's like, come on, we have to help Sid. Come on, we have to help Sid. Now, let me tell you why this really bothered me. First of all, kid. Because this was a classic. Fuck off. This is a classic television trope. But, uh, but, <laughs> hey. If you're the Bad Batch, don't you ever think to say, Hey, Omega, I know you want to do what's right, but you don't understand how much of a gangster this guy is, and we're going to leave this situation alone. Secondly, Sid. Sid's been basically their fucking pimp. Yeah, yeah. Like, why do you want to fucking help Sid? Because she's going to get... Sid, Sid... Has not been good to these people. Oh, I'm aware. Sid has threatened them. Sid has said, you know, fucking do my bidding or I'll let people in on your location. Yeah, maybe Sid has warmed up to the Bad Batch because the Bad Batch are making her money. But Sid is not their fucking friend. How do Tech and fucking Wrecker say, hold on, uh, Sid, can you guys stand over there? Omega, just come over over here for a second. Omega, Sid is a bad fucking person. We don't care if this gangster rips her fucking head off right now. Well, I, I suppose they're setting up for some kind of redemption arc with her. Furthermore, no, they're not. Because furthermore, at the end of the episode, the gangster said to these guys, hey, you're friends with Sid. Be careful. She's not to be trusted. And that's how it ended. With dark, ominous music, as if they're setting up Sid, will be selling them out. So good job, Omega. You just probably helped out someone who is going to fucking rat the Bad Batch out. For real. So, nice. So that... That well, was so fucking annoying after we just I discussed know. this. I, I knew you were going to say that. Time and time again. And these guys want to do something else because God forbid these people who have been fighting in a war for 25 years don't want to now have to owe their lives to a gangster. And so, and by the way, maybe these fucking two guys and maybe Hunter and the rest of them need to step up and man up and be like, okay, hold on. You're a kid. With all due respect, shut up right now. Thanks. I'm going to do adult stuff. Can, anyway, Sid, fuck you. You're in this. We're not. Go handle your business. Can that I, was fucking lame. We're helping Sid? Can Why? I, can I make a pred like a prediction, like an overall arc prediction about yeah. Sid? So Sid's Sid's gonna be put in a position where she's gonna have to prove that guy right, uh, but then she'll do something to like redeem herself at the very end. So you think whether, Sid will be back and forth? I think yeah. Might make I, a, I, a bad I, guy turn and then a baby face turn at the very end. Yes, I think that's pro she'll, she may even sacrifice herself to save Omega because Omega put themselves on the line to save her. We'll see. Because guess what? Because that, if we that's don't a, get that payoff, then then seriously, Omega is actually she is going now from simply a pale imitation of Ahsoka and Ezra, and it's more and more diminishing returns. She's now actually getting on my nerves because she's coming across to me like a naive but entitled brat. She oh, was yeah, raised. Yeah. 
Very, she... very well in Camino. Yeah. You know, she ain't no fucking orphan the way Ezra was or the way Ahsoka was. She ain't no orphan. Yeah, she had the goddamn... But she was raised by rich people. She was raised... She was given good clothing. She was given jewelry. She was given great digs. And she feels like she's never been off Camino. Who the fuck is she to tell these guys about the way the galaxy runs? It's ridiculous. These goddamn hardened soldiers need to be like, kid, you know nothing about the world. Shut up. Sit back. Let us handle this. Ahsoka Tano is the best animated character they've ever done. They must stop recycling that character. Ezra was diminishing returns, and Omega is crazy diminishing returns. Omega's useless. I'm sorry. I'm going to stick with the Bad Batch. But straight up, I am now officially looking forward to Crosshair episodes. Or anything that's not the kid. Seriously. Okay. And kid episodes, she's going to have to impress me. I'm not going to come in looking to blast her. But I am going to every time they repeat the same bullshit that we keep talking about... All we're doing is pointing out how lazy and uncreative they are. Honestly, they're writing this show like a shitty Saturday morning cartoon. And the Clone Wars expanded the Star Wars mythology in deep and meaningful ways. Absolutely. And that's what's bothering me about the Bad Batch. Well, I, I think it's not felony driven and that's... Part of Are the, you sure about that? Please look at the goddamn screen, and you're getting okay, quiet. Okay, fine, show fine, again. fine. I don't think it's Filoni driven. I think you're it's still looking at me. It's amazing. It's Filoni. I think it's. Why don't you just look at me in the screen? Okay, I don't think it's Filoni driven. I think it's the Jennifer Corbett uh, driven. Oh God, take this away from Jennifer Corbett now! I didn't know that. Who the hell is Jennifer Corbett? I think she worked on a bunch of the other shows with him. Like, She's terrible. Then I I, I don't know. Uh, the show is bad when Omega is featured. And don't you even try to get to me I'm about not saying my it. fanboy tears. No, about this is a gender issue or anything like that. I'm saying anyone, don't at me. Because I just told you, Ahsoka Tano is the character that I love. And this character and Ezra, who's a male, both diminishing returns can I, can for I, me. Can I uh, ask you? But this character is straight up annoying. Because when I first heard the voice of that robot was it Tio Teo yeah what was that about I thought it was I thought it was Kevin McDonald from Kids in the Hall could have been it's not it's Ben Schwartz who's that you never saw Parks and Rec- Recreation no I don't watch that shit. John Ralphio the worst I don't no he was, he was the voice of Sonic the Hedgehog too all right well I don't watch it I'm just telling you man you, you, know, know, you know this you Omega know, you know who was the voice uh, of um, the gangster guy Who? Ernie Hudson. Yeah, I knew I recognized that gangster guy, uh, his voice. I like the racing. Oh, I thought that was way, like, that was so fun. That was probably the best part was like, it was like. Pod race. It was pod race, but it was like. Mario Kart and ba- Padre. Like the, bad, the bad guy, pa- Padre. Yeah, yeah, well, I, I thought... It's it was, what Lucas should have done. I'm also a Mario Kart fan. I know you are. And so it's a it's a Mario Kart. It, to me, it was very much of a Mario Kart race in Star Wars. I'm trying not to be too cynical about it, but... You think they're going to put out a video game right That looked like a right setup right to a video game yeah, rather I, than I, an episode. I saw that, I saw that too. <laughs> so <laughs> if that's what they're doing... Is they're 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 telling it because again they tell us this shit is canon and it's important to the Star Wars galaxy. Okay, but if that episode was just to set up a video game, then fuck you guys for real. I, I and don't, don't make me watch Omega unless she starts doing something that's beyond being the conscience. A kid doesn't know everything. A child should not always be the conscience. I put Sid on the exact same level as that gangster. He seemed just as... He seemed like a gentleman, quite frankly. Sid is the one who feels a little bit like a jerk. Well, we'll we'll see how the heel turn, baby face turn back uh, turns. I know, but the nerve of that girl. Putting those fucking guys' lives on the line. Those guys, double or nothing, they couldn't afford that money. And it's like, no, we have to help Sid. You mean Sid? Sid is like Harvey Keitel in fucking Taxi Driver. Okay? Pimp. He's Pimp City. She, I mean. 
She's the goddamn Bad Batch pimp. She hasn't been good to them. Oh my gosh. And that's when the adults step up and go, um, Sid's not our friend, Omega. Omega, just let me, if, if I was actually in the Bad Batch in a calm way, I'd be like, well, I know you like Sid, but she's a very, very awful person. Are you aware that she's paying us money to kill people? So don't be so enthused to help Sid. She's really, really bad. Okay? All right. Now go play with your little toys and let us former soldiers either lose our minds or kill people. Okay. That's it. That's all you got. Okay. Well, we've got a cage match. Oh, my Lord. That's right. Quickly. We have to do a quick cage match. All right. Fast. Let's uh, go. We're going to do Captain Phasma. Uh, versus Princess Leia. Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma. Captain Phasma will beat Leia. What? And in, in an upset special. Because I believe that Leia would not fare well with Captain Phasma's height. Carrie Fisher, four foot one. <laughs> and that lady from Game of Thrones, everyone knows, six, is seven two. She's six three. Seven foot two. She's she's almost as tall as Manute Ball. Uh, no. That height uh, advantage. Gwendolyn Christie is between six, three. Gwendolyn Christie and Carrie Fisher, it's gonna be it's awful. It's gonna be like, you know, Shaq playing uh, a basketball against Vern Troyer. Are, for are you forgetting the fact that Princess Leia is a Skywalker and is four sensitive? Apparently I am forgetting that. Okay. That I'm just I just want to leave that point out there before you declare uh Go ahead. Before you declare Who's Cap gonna win? I'm just saying I'm saying Princess Clear Leia. Your throat. <laughs> I'm I wanna finish strong. Yeah, I really so do want to throw. Yeah. You started sounding like Babe oh, Ruth damn. in 1940, like eight when he had cancer and he gave that speech to Yankee Stadium. He's like, ah, I wanted to live two more months, but I was great being a Yankee. Yeah, I like to thank the Bronx, New York, for letting me be a Yankee and hitting 60 home runs in 1927. Okay. Uh, I'm going with Princess Leia, and yeah, that that's all I got. <laughs> all right, well, that's that's as good of a reason as any, because we got to get out of here. Okay. Jesus Christ. You got the music queued up? Do I have the music? Listen to this person. He's such a piece of shit. I hope I did well, Kevin Flynn. And, I, I and, and JC. Thank you, guys. I think you did this time. See, I remembered. I had a hard time remembering Kevin's name, and then I kept thinking Jeff Bridges' character in Tron. <laughs> and his name's Kevin Flint. <laughs> that, that's how I got it. I was like, okay, that's Oh, my name. God. Can we, can we now go? Okay, sure. All right, <laughs> folks. Uh, you can follow Eastside Dave on all social media platforms at Eastside Dave. Uh, you can check us out on all where all podcasts are available, uh, Google, iTunes, and uh, Spotify. Uh, Yaddle Shadow slash The Watchers Feed, EastsideDaveCountry.com, uh, and then also uh, YouTube, Eastside Dave TV. Uh, I think that's it. That's it, brother. Listen, um, I said it before, I'll say it again. We're going to watch every episode of The Bad Batch, but you know my feelings. I'm not here to destroy Omega, I'm going to stay open minded. But there's a significant drop-off between the Clone Wars and this show. And it's Omega that's ruining the show for me. I'm just no, being I, honest. I agree. That last, it's, it's, that it's, third it's, episode was excellent. And, it was and, probably the best episode of the series so far. You look at the Crosshair episodes, and they're more adultish. And I'm going to tell you something else, too. Okay? Don't take my word for it. Stanley Mack is a 13... My, uh, uh, my son, Sith Stanley. Okay, he's, he's left. He's left. He, he, he had to go somewhere. That's why I'll, I can curse now. Oh, okay. So you see, I've try, I try to keep the language somewhat clean, but when Stanley Mac leaves, when Sis Stanley exits the building, Dave Van can let the F words fly. Okay. So fuck you, America! No, I mean, <laughs> but um, here, here's the thing. He loves Star Wars, okay? Yeah. He's not into the Bad Batch. Really? He's not. Is it because of Omega? He thinks it's too childish. And I go, Fuck. That's Omega. He's not he's not into. He's not into the Bad Batch themselves. And without any influence, he said, I did like episode three. Uh, that's funny. He said, I liked episode three, though. Okay. 
Well, 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 no, but what does that tell you? They're making these shows too young, man. Too young. You don't need to make the Bad Batch for five and six year olds. And when Omega's on screen, that's how they come across. When Crosshair's on the screen, they come across for kids 10, 11, 12, 13, but also the grown adults who like Star Wars can watch it and get into it. Can't they do a more adult cartoon? I don't know why they can't just produce more like why is it that they can't just produce two cartoons at a, at the same time like it always seems like they're putting out one animated show a year yeah i don't they, know they they i feel like they should just invest more money in that yeah i don't know so like i said okay i'm just i'm just letting disney know this is not this is necessarily me okay i have a 13 year old who i often do audience testing with okay this kid's not into it got to be a reason for it. Now, having said that, I'm going to stick with the show. As for the Mando season three trailer, thought it looked awesome. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I am supremely excited. Six weeks out. That's right. So we're going to end on that. Have a good night, everyone. All right. He is Jedi Jared. I am Darth David. This has been Yaddle Chattel, a Star Wars podcast. Good 